I always, um, I do want to mention Leo is our big support. He serves as our vice president in, um, for the chamber, but also as our communications chair. So he is instrumental in helping us ensure the quality of, of the streaming and also helping us coordinate our virtual chats. Um, today, we're really excited to be able to feature legal services of Northern California. Um, we have a very important topic that we'll be covering today, which is around the evictions moratorium that's due to the COVID-19. And we really want to have an opportunity to be able to share this resource about what it means to our community members and what specific steps that it, they might need to do or make sure that they have an order um, if they're going to be or what, what this actually means to them. What I want to do, I don't see anyone currently in Zoom um, at this time, but we'll, we'll monitor as people start joining us. For anyone who's watching us live, just a, a friendly reminder about our virtual community chats. It's really an opportunity for the Hispanic Chamber to feature experts uh, that are reviewing specific topics that are important to our community members or our small business owners. And so that is the purpose of, of these particular chats. We always remind everyone about our virtual meeting norms, which are simply to um, mute when joining and be able to feature your video when possible. That just helps us connect. For those that are joining us via Facebook Live, feel free to add your questions into the comments section. Um, if, we, if we can, we'll get to those today and if we by any chance miss any of them we will be following up with you at at a later time we just want to make sure that we note that um, as always we invite everyone who joins us to stay engaged in the conversation to be kind and brave uh, to ask questions and to uh, expect and accept non-closure and what that means for us is that we may not be able to answer every question today if depending on the time um, so we might not be able to close the loop on every question but we will be definitely following up with additional resources and information um, with that in mind I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, the virtual mic over to Oliver who's joining us today and Oliver you can introduce uh, well you, you can introduce yourself and Kathy as well so take it away um, hi everyone, Alma. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, and thank you to the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce for having us. My name is Oliver Ellinger. I'm an attorney at Legal Services of Northern California, and uh, with me is Katia Morales Sarin, and I'll, I'll let her introduce herself. I think you're muted. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Katia Morales Sarin, and I'm an advocate at Legal Services of Northern California, and we are very excited to present to you this evening. Yeah. And so uh, before we get started on the topic for the evening, I would like to talk a little bit about legal services in Northern California. Um, so Leo uh, uh, very helpfully put our mission statement up there. And um, so I'll sort of just put that in some context and, as you folks can read it. So Legal Services of Northern California is a nonprofit law firm. We have eight offices across the North State. So that we cover um, the counties in California north of the Bay Area. And in each, of those, in each of those counties that we have offices, we assist folks with civil legal issues free of charge. Uh, and so for us, the, the issues that we see in the folks coming to us with is people coming to us with issues about their housing rights, their consumer rights, about public benefits, um, about educational rights for, for themselves and their children in school. Um, and we, we try and do our best to provide a scope of legal services for folks for everywhere from advice, where all someone needs to do is just talk to an attorney for 20 minutes to answer a specific question, to representation, where someone has a legal claim that we're able to, to represent in, and uh, you know, I, that means I comb my hair and I put on a tie and we're your lawyer. And all of it is free of charge because the idea is that, you know, in some cases where everybody is better served if one person can assert their legal right. Because if, if it's happening to you, it might be happening to other folks who don't make it to the office and we want to right a wrong in the system. Um, we, we there, you know, in our offices, we have very, very smart attorneys and advocates who are very, very passionate and we do the best we can to help folks. Um, but there just there's such a great need for legal services, and it far far outstrips our ability to help folks. Um, and so, you know, what we have to do a lot of times when people come to us for for services is is empower or educate folks 
to, to assert their own legal rights because there's just not enough lawyers for all the issues people have. Um, so we can, you know, assert, uh, empower folks and educate folks. And we can also empower and educate uh, other service providers, people's case managers or people's, or the churches who help folks with rental assistance, just so those people in the community who help a lot of other folks understand the laws and the rules. So, you know, uh, one of the things that we try and well, we, we tried to do before COVID-19 was get out and do a lot of community presentations. So now we're doing them by Zoom. So now we're staying in, but we're, uh, you know, broadcasting rights and the changes in the law to folks. Um, because we're a nonprofit, everything we do is free, but it also means that we accept money from the, from the state bar and from the federal government. And those come with certain restrictions and it restricts our services to folks who are uh, have lower incomes or folks who are 60 and above. Um, and so that means there are some people who come and call us so that we can't represent them. It doesn't mean we can't provide them with legal advice materials we've made for people. And it doesn't mean we can't go out and do presentations for these communities. It just means to, to go 100% or go to the nth degree for some folks, um, we, we've got to screen them. And, um, and so, you know, we want to invite people you know, no matter what, if you've got an issue and you're not sure where to turn, please call us. And if we can't help you, we'll try and find who does um, or who, who can. Um, I hope that covers sort of Leon Allman, Katia, if you can think of something I should have added there as an intro. I'm seeing. Uh, it, it's up to you. Um, I definitely, uh, you know, if there's anything important, you definitely let it know. Uh, I just want to jump on real quick to um, the website so people will know, right? So it's lsnc.net, uh, and then you can see briefly what sort of legal help uh, you can get right there in the front page. And obviously, we will leave the information of, of, for Ollie later on. Um, but but yeah, anything else do you want to add, Ollie? That we can we left out. Sure. Right. And so and so our our website is a fantastic resource for for anybody, whether you're going to call our office first. Um, and and uh, we have materials on the areas of law we generally help out in a, in a sort of a normal time. And then we also have materials uh, uh, for COVID-19 related, you know, changes to rules and regulations. And so I invite folks to take a look at that if it's something that'd be helpful. Um, and then the only other thing I'll say is for Solano County, our office is in Vallejo. We have uh, five of us total, five attorneys total. Um, I, in our contact information for each of our offices is on the website, and I'll also have my contact information at the end of our presentation. Um, and so, you know, give us a call if, if you need something, and we'll, either we can help you or we'll try and find someone who can. Yep, fantastic, there we go. We are, are, we're in Vallejo across from the courthouse and the county building. We're right next door to the weed shop, so uh, healthy traffic. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a good intro there. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add um, that I, I know because of our conversations is that you have individuals who can speak Spanish um, yes. that can support Spanish speaking members of our community. So it's a, bi a bilingual support uh, services as well. Yeah, absolutely. As I like to say, I can speak enough Spanish to tell you that I can't help you in Spanish. Um, but our, our front desk is, is bilingual and then we have a, a interpretation. So not just Spanish, we have um, a Tagalog speakers in our program that can help. We have um, an interpretation line. It, it's, our, it's our goal, it's our aim to be accessible to everybody. And we, um, we hope we don't, you know, we, we don't want to just create another barrier or another door that's difficult to get through. Thank you. But but that's true. We also uh, we can introduce Kathy. I don't know if you Kathy, do you have to introduce yourself. What do you want to say? Sure. Um, so I'm Kathy Morales Seren, and I am a legal advocate at Lisnick in the Vallejo office. And as Ollie mentioned, we have a variety of different service areas that you can see on our website. And we are also, uh, although our office might not be entirely bilingual, we do have folks there who speak Spanish, and we definitely have um, access to interpreters who can help us if uh, someone comes in and there's a language barrier there. So it's, uh, we have Russian interpreters, we have almost every language, I think that's local within our area, we, we're able to find someone. Wow. 
right, let's see, we transition to the presentation then for today. Yes, please. And so, uh, Leo and Alma, unless you think otherwise, what we have made the slides um, alternating English and Spanish, but we thought we might just give the presentation in English. What do you think? Um, we can. Um, it's up to you, actually, since um, we, we can do one of two things. We do have viewers. Our viewership is bilingual. Mm -hmm. So um, this will, as it presents itself and it gets repeated, it'll be in bilingual. So you can, we can do the presentation on English or alternate or do a separate uh, version in Spanish, whichever is easiest. And Katia, Katia has to do the heavy lifting. So I'll leave it up to, to you, Katia. Uh, whatever is best for your viewers and um, the people who are servicing today is fine with me. So whatever you think is best, we can go at it one side of the at a time. That might push us right at the 20 minute mark, or we can do it separately and we might save a little bit of time, but either way is fine. Yeah. We're gonna say something over. Oh, I was gonna say, let's, let's try alternating and see how quickly we're, we're going. Um, and I think if anything, that'll um, uh, influence me to speak less. Uh, and then because uh, and that'll help that sounds perfect all right um okay go ahead all right and so we're going to speak today about uh tenant rights during COVID 19 so that this is focused on commercial tenant rights we know that uh your group services many um uh business owners small business owners who may be renting their space. There are differing rules and differing protection between commercial and residential tenants, and we'll make sure to bring those up as they, as they come along. But the, the biggest protection sort of applies equally to both. Bienvenidos. Hoy vamos a hablar sobre los derechos de inquilinos, específicamente para la gente que tiene propiedades comercial, aunque sí hay leyes que protegen igual a la gente que tiene, que son inquilinos residenciales y comerciales, pero hoy vamos a enfocarnos en el segundo. All right, and so we, we wouldn't be lawyers if we didn't have a disclaimer. We just want to remind folks that this is general legal advice in, in, in your specific legal situation. Please don't rely on it 100%. It's to give you a framework of what's out there. If, and if you need specific legal advice about a specific personal situation, please reach out to a professional. Y queremos que todos sepan que esto es información general no está distinguida para proporcionar información precisa a su um, situación específica, pero si usted tiene algún problema, debe de comunicarse con un abogado uh, relacionado a su situación particularizado. Y aquí solamente estamos dando información general sobre la, que está relaciona, relacionado con COVID-19. To make is that the protections for, for commercial and residential tenants are continuing to change. I'm sure folks have seen a lot of different headlines in the news. Uh, they probably heard the word moratorium a lot. Um, but and so we want to sort out where folks are getting their protection from. But the two points I'd want to make is one, things are changing. And so this might not be the, the law now might not be the case next month especially because the state legislature is back in session for the first time since COVID-19, and so they might do something bigger. And then the second point I'd want to make is where a renter has multiple layers of protection, um, the strongest protection prevails, right? And so if the county has done something stronger than the governor, then the county's protection is what you can rely on. La protección para los inquilinos y los residentes continúa cambiando, entonces hay algunas protecciones que comienzan al nivel del condado, estatal o federal. Y lo importante es que todo el mundo sepa que la protección que, le, que lo ayude más a la situación suya en particular 
eso es lo que le, lo que le, aplica, le va a aplicar a usted. Entonces, ahorita, eh, como dice uh, la pantalla, el sistema judicial y el gobe, gobernador federal han tomado las medidas más firmas para proteger a los residentes durante crisis de salud, pero las cosas continúan a cambiar. Entonces, es importante que todo el mundo esté pendiente en el cambio de la ley, pero que se recuerden que lo que, lo que le va a proteger más a usted se le va a aplicar. And before we dive into how the rules have changed due to COVID-19, we wanted to point out, um, especially because many folks have never had to deal with eviction or anything around eviction before, to point out some of the rights that tenants, whether residential or commercial tenants, always have. And so, you know, the big one to pay attention to is a landlord can't perform what's called a self-help eviction or to remove a tenant without going through the court process. And so that means all tenants, are commercial and residential, are entitled to receive a notice and go through a court procedure before they are evicted. And so a landlord can't change the locks, remove people's belongings, call the police, or shut off utilities to make somebody move. And that applied before COVID and it applies now during COVID. Y derechos que inquilinos siempre tendrán, queremos enfocarnos en eso primero, es que un dueño no puede realizar un desalojo por su cuenta. Ya sea un dueño no puede remover a un inquilino uh, o así nomás a, a sacar sus cosas, a pagar los servicios públicos. Y si eso pasa, es importante que usted llame a la policía porque es ilegal y eso es un desalojo que no se permite. And so to dive a little more specifically into that, before a tenant is at any risk of eviction, so any risk of being removed or any risk of having um, an eviction reported on their credit, uh, the landlord has to give them a notice, which either tells them what they've done wrong um, and give them a chance to fix it or tell them that the lease is ending. Um, if a landlord is trying to remove you for, not, for doing something wrong, such as breaking the lease terms or not paying the rent, the notice has to give you the, the chance to fix it. So there's no, that's it, you're done. Um, and then especially in commercial tenancies, uh, the, the lease agreement itself might provide someone longer or more specific notice protections than you would get under the law. Uh, and the notice has to be in writing. It's got to be a piece of paper in writing just calling you and telling you you owe your rent or giving you a text saying, you know, um, you haven't paid this bill, so I'm kicking you out. That's not sufficient. It doesn't give someone the chance. The idea of a notice is to give someone a chance to fix the relationship. And so a uh, uh, cursory communication is not sufficient to do that. And therefore is not sufficient for a landlord to end someone's right to rent, whether it's residential or commercial. Es muy importante que todo mundo se entere que usted está, tiene el derecho de recibir noticia por escrito de un desalojo. El dueño no puede solamente hacerlo por su parte, sino que le tiene que avisar que ya lo va a tratar de sacar para, que, uh, para comenzar ese proceso. Entonces, una llamada telefónica o un texto no es suficiente. Tiene que ser un documento escrito que se lo entrega a usted. Uh, el aviso si aleja que usted no, ha cumpli uh, no cumplió con algún término de contrato, le tiene que dejar una oportunidad para uh, curar ese problema o arreglar uh, lo que dicen que, que está haciendo mal. Para las personas que, esto es igual para personas que alquilan propiedad residencial y comercial. Then, uh, when someone When a renter receives a written notice, it, give, it prescribes a time period after which the landlord has the right to go to court and, and get an order to remove the tenant. And a uh, tenant always has the right to that court process. There's, there's no removal from the place you live without that court process. Um, and then right now, due to COVID-19, all court evictions are paused. No evictions should, no evictions should move if they were filed after April 6th. And that pause 
lasts for 90 days until the governor ends the state of emergency. So right now the state of emergency exists. Uh, it, let's say it ends at the end of uh, at the end of May, and so no evictions would can move through the courts for June, July, and August. And so it wouldn't be till September till a renter, whether a commercial or a residential renter, would face an eviction. And this and this time period is to allow folks to the time to gather their resources to catch up on rent or come up with other some other sort of arrangement to keep you know uh, hall, people who rent their homes from becoming homeless. It's to keep small business owners you know from losing the space they rent so that when everything clears up, they can bring their employees back, they can start their business again. It's a pause to keep people where where they are, um, but it's a temporary pause as I guess all pauses are, right? There's no such thing as a, a permanent pause. Ya que usted reciba un anuncio sobre el desalojo, el, el siguiente proceso es que el dueño tiene que matricular o proporcionar los papeles a la corte. Entonces, eso quiere decir que va a meter una demanda que se llama detención ilegal para removerlo a usted como inquilino y colocar el... Eh, el uh, desalojo en su registro. Ahora, desde el 6 de abril, todos los desalojos están en pausa. Eso quiere decir que un dueño ahorita no puede matricular ningún desalojo uh, si fue el 7 de abril seguido. Pero algo que pasó el día 5 de abril, eso todavía debe de contar. Y esta pausa va a dilatar hasta 90 días después que se termine el estado de emergencia. Entonces, el gobierno está haciendo esto para ayudar a los inquilinos a sostener sus, uh, lo, lo que puedan para mantenerlos en una posición que está ahorita y no sacar a la gente así nomás. And so one last point I'll make about that pause. Um, for most folks in, in many counties, the pause on evictions is the strongest protection they have. Uh, and so on our website, we have a video that explains this pause on evictions very, very specifically, the YouTube video, very slick. And we've got it in English, Spanish, Russian, Mandarin. And so it, it's probably the best material we've made so far. Um, so sorry, Katia, that's a little off script, but if you want to direct folks to the website. <laughs> in nuestro sitio web, nosotros tenemos un video que habla específicamente sobre la pausa de los desalojos y lo tenemos en diferentes idiomas, ya sea español, ruso, tagalo. Entonces usted ahí puede um, buscar el video, verlo en nuestro sitio web o en YouTube y es una presentación de seis minutos que le dice a usted exactamente cuáles son las profesiones que usted tiene durante este tiempo. Um, all right, and so, um, you know, the governor's actions and the federal government's action all and make the news. And so it's important for folks to understand that neither Governor Newsom nor the federal government or Congress, they haven't declared a moratorium on evictions. The governor's actions and Congress's actions through the stimulus bill have provided limited eviction protections for residential tenants only, not for commercial tenants. So those only apply to, to folks who are renting their homes and not renting business space. Um, however, the governor has blocked landlords, either residential or commercial landlords, from increasing rent over 10% during the emergency. So folks, whether you're renting your business space or your home or your apartment, you shouldn't be seeing a rental increase above 10%. Es muy importante que todo el mundo sepa que no hay, no han declarado ninguna moratoria sobre los desalojos. Um, hay mucha, mucha información y siempre nosotros estamos oyendo la, las leyes estatales y federales, pero no han dicho que hay ninguna moratoria sobre los desalojos. Lo que sí han hecho es que no se es prohibido que un dueño alquile o sube el alquiler más de 10% en, en, en la propiedad que usted está alquilando. Y también si no le pueden cobrar más del 10% de lo que le cobraron al alquiler anterior. Esas son las únicas protecciones ahorita. Y la mayoría de esas protecciones son para la, las propiedades residenciales, no para las uh, propiedad comercial. And so Prior to 
the county's action, which we'll talk about next, some of the cities and uh, some of the specific cities in Solano County passed resolutions to protect renters, to protect folks from being evicted when they lost their jobs. Um, these, um, none of these did anything beyond what the governor did. And so they only applied to residential, um, residential tenancies. And I believe Vallejo, Venetian, and Sassoon were the ones who passed, maybe Fairfield as well. Um, additionally, the sheriff has said it won't lock anybody out of their place after an eviction until the emergency passed. So that means that someone could go through the process and lose the process. And so they're gonna have something that shows up on their record to show they were evicted, but they won't actually be removed from the space until after the emergency. We don't know exactly how long the sheriff will stop doing this, um, but it's sort of a, another temporary protection to keep folks where they are in their place now. Hay derechos adicionales de parte de la ciudad del condo, uh, el condado, pero no son más de lo que ha hecho el gobernador, el gobierno estatal o federal. Uh, unas ciudades como Vallejo, Vanicia y la ciudad de Susún han hecho unas resoluciones, pero no son más de lo que ha hecho el, el gobierno estatal. Uh, lo que sí ha sucedido es que el sheriff del condado de Solano ha declarado que no va a sacar a ningún inquilino hasta que se pase la emergencia. Um, más que eso, solamente las, estas protecciones solamente son para inquilinos de, res, de propiedades residenciales. And so um, on April 28th, the Solano County Board of Supervisors passed an eviction resolution which offers both residential and commercial uh, tenants in Solano County the strongest level of protection. So as we talked about at the beginning, because it's the strongest level of protection, it'll be the one that applies to, to you in most of your circumstances. And so what it, what it does is it, the first thing the resolution does is stop landlords from evicting tenants over rent or late fees that happen during the state of emergency and for 90 days afterward. And so that means that if you were unable to pay your rent because of, you know, you, because of COVID-19, it's got to be related to the pandemic. You lost your job. You had to take care of a family member. You stayed home with a child whose school was canceled. You're a business owner and you lost a lot of business. You were forced to shut down because of the county's orders. Um, the, your landlord cannot evict you over that rent. As it says at the bottom, it doesn't forgive that rent. You will have to pay it eventually. The landlord could collect it in a different way. The landlord can send you to collections. Um, the landlord can write it off on their taxes, but they can't evict you just for not paying the rent. And the idea behind this is to give folks as long as possible to enter into a repayment plan. When folks get their feet again, or they, they're able to use um, uh, the assistance available to them. And so the, the resolution also encourages landlords and tenants to enter into a repayment agreement. And so uh, under the resolution, a landlord can't evict you for not paying your rent, and they also can't not renew your lease because you're behind unless they give you a chance to enter into a payment agreement. So, and the payment agreement, a payment agreement that gives you a year to pay back what you owe is considered a reasonable payment agreement. And so it's, and so this is more than a pause. This is something that takes away someone's risk of losing their home or their business because of the COVID downturn and replaces it with a chance to enter into a repayment agreement. El día 28 de abril, la Junta de Supervisores aprobó una resolución en el condado de Solana. Esto es una resolución más fuerte, entonces le va a aplicar a la gente del condado de Solano y los va a proteger um, porque es más fuerte que la, las protecciones estatales y federales. Y lo que pasó es que van a impedir que los dueños desalojen a los inquilinos por el alquiler y por pagos atrasados que inquilinos no uh, pueden pagar durante el estado de emergencia y por 90 días después que se termine esta emergencia. También va alienta que el dueño y el inquilino uh, establecen un acuerdo para 
tratar de pagar el alquiler que no se pudo pagar durante la crisis. Y el periodo de pago debe de comenzar y debe ser entre 12 meses. Y esto es para darle una oportunidad a la persona mantener su hogar y poder hacer los pagos en la forma que ellos lo puedan pagar. Los dueños todavía pueden cobrar el alquiler que se debe. No, es ningún, no están perdonando el alquiler, sino que es una forma de repago con tiempo que sea razonable para el inquilino. And, and so one question we start, we've been starting to get a lot from folks who have called us is whether they should sign a repayment agreement that, your, your, that their landlord gave to them. And, and so, we, you know, as we, as we tell folks, you know, with almost any question, if you've got a legal document, please try and see an attorney first. Um, but we would want to point out also that, especially under the county's ordinance, if a landlord gives you a repayment agreement and it's not something that you think you can afford or not something you're ready to agree to because you haven't gotten your unemployment or your small business loan, refusal to sign the repayment agreement is never a grounds for eviction, right? Um, and then a lot of repayment agreements use the word forbearance. Uh, and forbearance is, is a tricky word uh, because it doesn't mean that rent is forgiven. Um, And it also doesn't mean that you have a set amount of time to pay it back. A forbearance agreement generally means, you know, if you owe rent for 12 months, it's going to say for two of those months, you don't have to pay any rent. But in, rent, in month three, you have to pay three months rent all at once. It's, it's just everything comes due all at once. And so a repayment agreement called a forbearance agreement is generally one that's not giving you a discount. It's not giving you a payment plan. And so if you get something like this, you should know that you don't have to, you don't have to sign it. Um, and you can offer your own repayment agreement under the county resolution in a, in a, in a manner that you can afford to pay it back. Um, one form of repayment agreement that we've seen offers folks a discount in rent. Um, and that's not something that's in the resolution. And so if your landlord is offering you a discount in rent, that is a legal right that they're offering you that, that they don't have to. And so that might be a repayment agreement that's a little more fair. But at the end of the day, it should be something that you know as the residential tenant or the commercial tenant that you can pay back. Um, and then, a, you know, a payment, uh, uh, a renter doesn't have to put any repayment agreement in writing. When a renter makes a payment, you have the right to say where you want it applied to, right? And so in any traceable form of payment you make, if you know you're behind, if you, know, you lost your job in April, but you got your unemployment in May, when you make that May payment, you should say for May's rent and 50 bucks of April's rent, or for May's rent and 100 bucks of April's rent. So the landlord has to apply it to where you ask them to, and you can keep better track of what you owe and make up for it in the time that's available to you when you gather your resources together. Una pregunta que nuestra oficina ha recibido es que si el inquilino debe de firmar un acuerdo de pago por el alquiler atrasado. Más que todo queremos que ustedes, si reciben algún acuerdo de parte del dueño, primero visiten a un abogado para repasar ese acuerdo y asegurarse que usted puede hacer los pagos que, está, que están escritos. Si el dueño le pide que firme este acuerdo, consulte primero con un abogado. Negarse a firmar el acuerdo de reembolso nunca sería un motivo para desalojo. Y también la tolerancia no significa que el alquiler se perdonó, como ya habíamos dicho, sino que usted tiene un tiempo para volver a pagar ese alquiler. El acuerdo no tiene que ser uh, algo por escrito y puede ser en la manera que usted puede pagar. Ya sea, usted siempre debe de pagar su alquiler de una forma verificable, por ejemplo, un cheque, y ahí puede designar exactamente cuál cantidad de dinero quiere que se aplique. Por ejemplo, podemos decir que el alquiler es para el mes de agosto, pero usted está incluyendo 100 dólares más para el, el alquiler del mes de mayo. Hemos visto algunos acuerdos donde los dueños están dando una rebaja en el alquiler, pero no es algo que hemos visto mucho. Entonces, es algo, es importante saber que este acuerdo es algo que usted puede negociar. Asegúrese que los pagos es algo que usted puede hacer para no atrasarse más. 
Right. And I think we'll we'll finish right on time here. We just want to, we've been talking about renter rights, but we want to make folks aware of other uh, uh, of other resources that they might have now if you're looking at losing your job or downsizing your business. Um, and so, the, you know, counties are expediting enrollment and benefits, uh, such as food stamps or Medi-Cal for coverage. Uh, and uh, we remind folks a lot that you've been paying into these systems all, you know, every time you work, you might as well work for you when you need it. Um, if you've lost your health insurance, you can also apply through Covered California through June 30th. They just opened up enrollment. Um, and if you've lost your job, uh, you're likely eligible for unemployment benefits. If you had worked as an independent contractor before uh, and you weren't eligible for unemployment, you may be now under a new federal program uh, that, and they just started paying those, they just started accepting applications April 28th for that. Uh, and so if in the past you think, ah, this doesn't apply to me, it might now. Um, and then folk property owners, especially property owners who have a mortgage that's backed or guaranteed by the federal government, they have uh, a chance to pause a, uh, foreclosure proceedings and enter into repayment or modification agreements. Uh, the best resource for, for property owners, homeowners, uh, right now, I think is going to be the CFPB's website, and I'm sorry, Katya, that's not on there. I'm off script again. A CFPB for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They just opened up a homeowner resource page this morning. So, uh, but their information is generally the most useful. CFPB.gov, I guess. Um, but but their resources available for folks who have a mortgage. Um, and so, you know, if, if some of these renter protections apply to the folks who rent from you and they're not paying you rent and you're worried about losing your home and it's the only, you know, source of income you have, there are also protections for you as well. We want these, the idea of these resources is to keep everybody where they are now until things calm down. And so it should be helping people at every level. And we know that's not the case. We know there are a lot of gaps and holes and delays, but that's the idea. And so if, you, if you're saying what resources are available for me, there might be something. Bueno, hemos hablado mucho sobre inquilinos y el alquiler, pero queremos que sepa que hay otros recursos disponibles a usted. Si usted uh, necesita diferentes beneficios, el condado ahorita está cerrando la inscripción como para recibir cupones de alimento, medical y asistencia para no perder su hogar. Si ha perdido su seguro de su seguro médico, Cover California ahorita está aceptando um, que se inscriba hasta el 30 de junio. Y si ha perdido su trabajo, puede aplicar para los beneficios de desempleo. Si usted trabaja por su cuenta, todavía puede aplicar, ya sea que antes no. Comenzando el 28 de abril, hay una nueva, hay un nuevo programa específicamente para gente que trabaja para, por su cuenta que perdió trabajo por el, el COVID-19. Y también para dueños de propiedades, queremos que sepan que pueden recibir asistencia, asistencia en su hipoteca, especialmente si tienen un préstamo uh, del gobierno. El sitio web, me lo van a tener que decir otra vez, Ollie, that website. Uh, 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 Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, so cfpb.gov. Cfpb.gov. Entonces creo que lo podemos poner en algún lado para que la gente lo tenga si es necesario. And so, uh, thank you folks for having us. I guess we'll, we'll do some questions and answers now, but I put my email up there and this is my direct line. Uh, and so if you, you know, if you get our contact information, you can't get through, you can feel free to call. Uh, if I don't pick up, which probably won't leave a message and we'll, we'll have someone get back to you and we'll make sure that if we can't help you, we'll try and find someone who can. Well, thank you so much, uh, both of you for, that was a, such an important uh, presentation. I learned so much about everything and the different steps, both from the state federal and then the city county and the protections that are available. Um, before I ask a few questions, because I, I did receive a question to ask, um, I want to ask those who might be on Zoom now, uh, to if you have a question, feel free to unmute or feel free to add your question on chat, and we'll make sure to ask that on your behalf. 
So I just want to give a moment for that in case anybody wants to unmute themselves. And, and while we're waiting for that, Leo has found the correct website for Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It's consumerfinance.gov. And you can see they have their unified housing website. And so this would be for homeowners. Um, and, and it even applies if you own a home that you rent out. Um, and so it's those protections to stop a foreclosure. Um, so, th so thank you Leo, for that uh, real-time fact check. Now, if there are, I, I, I know this is probably something that you don't know, but um, if, if you, you mentioned loans protected by the government, would that indicate commercial loans, you know? Ooh, or uh, or, or no, and so that's something that I don't know enough about. I know that if you have a mortgage, you can. There are lookup tools online where you can put in your your address and your social security number, and it'll say. And so, so when you got a mortgage, whether it's for your home or, or anything like that, um, uh, you someone. So some bank has your has your mortgage. You might have been paying your mortgage for ten years, and now that same bank might not have it anymore. They might have sold it five times. And so when you purchased your home with your mortgage, you may have thought, "Well, the federal government doesn't have anything to do with my loan." But they may now. They may have purchased it in the interim period. So it's always worth going through these lookup tools. Um, I, I will note that yeah, I don't think the federal more moratorium on evictions, which applies to federally backed um, rental properties, applies to any commercial properties. Because the, and so um, I don't know that that would be useful for commercial properties. I think for uh, folks who run small businesses and rent office space, the Small Business Association, SBA loans, will probably be the most useful for them. And unfortunately, the, you, know, the, you know, the media tells us that those are kind of plagued with the most delay uh, you know, and you know, mom and pop stores and getting the loan, but you know the um, you know multi million, multi billion conglomerate steakhouse is getting it. So you know we we don't have too much more to report on that, unfortunately. No worries, that's a different conversation. Um, <laughs> thank you. And then I, I know I'm doing work with you guys in the past. Um, one of the things that I like the, the the research that you had available is obviously it's always important to have a communication with your landlord, right? There's, if you are struggling to pay your rent, I know you have mentioned in the past is, is that communication is very important, and you even share resources, a uh, sample of letters that you can provide um, for those letters that you can write to your landlord in case they're not they don't they don't have an office open or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think you spend a little bit of time talking about the process, right? Communication with your landlord and, 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 and providing writing if you're struggling. Of course. And so I think, I think that's a good segue to say um, a, a lot of these things we spoke about, there will be uh, legal resources available for folks who frequently asked question materials. Um, and so I know that the county is pushing some of those out and we're trying to push out uh, and make available materials about these rules for everyone, not just the folks who make it to us. And we would hope to include in ours some sample letters. And, and I think the idea of communication, Leo, is a great point. Um, when, you're, when you have to go to court to get something or to stop something, there's already been a breakdown in the relationship and you always get more of what you want and what you want more quickly if you keep the relationship together. And so, you know, we've, in longer uh, presentations about tenant rights, we tell folks, communicate with your landlord in writing all the time um, to avail yourself of some of the protections that exist for a renter, to avail themselves of some of the protections that existed before the Solano County resolution. They actually were required to tell their landlord, hey, I lost my job. Hey, my mom is sick and I have to stop work to take care of her. And so we would encourage folks to, to you know, and there, there aren't any magic words. If you can't pay your rent um, as, as a residential renter because of something to do with COVID-19, just write a letter to your landlord, mail it out the same way you'd mail rent or write an email. That's how you do it. Just put it in writing and make it honest because everyone is trying to work with everybody right now. Um, as, and I think for uh, commercial tenancies, there's probably a more specific communication method that's laid out in the lease. Um, but the same protections would apply to someone in the county. And so, you know, approaching someone with 
exactly the loss you're dealing with and exactly the time frame you see is probably the best way to work something out. It all, you always get more of what you want when you come to an agreement than when you have to go to court. Um, Katha, did you want to? Uh, yes. Okay. Es importante, Leo comentó que nuestro sitio web tiene información sobre cómo comunicarse con el dueño de la propiedad. Nosotros queremos que todo el mundo sepa que aunque la resolución que acaba de pasar el 28 de abril no requiere que usted se comunique con el dueño para avisarle que no puede pagar el alquiler por situaciones relacionadas con COVID-19, es importante que se comuniquen para mantener esa relación. Siempre es más fácil negociar los problemas ya que no han llegado a la corte. Entonces, nuestra sugerencia es que usted se comunique con el dueño, ya sea por una carta escrita o un correo electrónico y les avise que usted no va a poder hacer los pagos de alquiler porque ha perdido su trabajo um, relacionado a COVID-19 y que quiere llegar a un acuerdo uh, con ellos para hacer ese pago. Nuestro sitio web también tiene unas pruebas, un ejemplo de una carta que usted puede escribir, pero no hay ninguna, no hay ninguna palabras mágicas, simplemente solamente los tiene que avisar. Gracias. Um, I did get a question about, well, it was more someone had outreach to us um, and said that they had been receiving disturbing um, updates from community members being threatened by their landlord to evict them because of their um, immigration status. Mm -hmm. And so they're undocumented. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if there's um, any information or, or resources available for undocumented members of our community mm -hmm. who are being um, currently threatened or harassed or added additional stress and anxiety around this particular topic um, that they might be able to, to use to facilitate both the conversations, but also I, I just don't know what resources are available for them. Okay. Well, so first of all, that sort of behavior is absolutely unacceptable and absolutely illegal. It's, it is illegal for an owner to threaten to call immigration um, or to use someone's immigration status as a reason to evict them. Um, and so, you know, if, if, if that case were to go before a judge, that person would have a defense to any, any eviction or any reason asserted for the eviction that this is actually based off of a retaliation or, or based off of my immigration status. Um, it is also a violation of anti-discrimination laws. So not only would you know, um, a resident subjected to these type of threats have a defense to any eviction, they would have an affirmative claim they could bring. Uh, and, and so that, you know, so that's kind of at the end of the, the line. Currently, right now, um, no matter what a property owner is saying these types of things, making these types of threats, no matter them hooting and hollering about it, they can't get an eviction. They can't go to court. They can't start an eviction. Someone who's undocumented has the same process rights in eviction court as, as anyone else. And so no matter, no matter what a property owner says, they can't start a an eviction um, and a property a property owner who would make those types of threats uh, and, and threaten that type of unacceptable and illegal behavior might try and go around the law and, and just remove somebody change kick them out change the locks uh, and we have found that the local police uh, in in each city in Solano County are responding appropriately to these um, appropriately if not super quickly um, to to these types of complaints that if, if someone says, hey, I rent and my landlord just kicked me out, they will tell the landlord, please put them back in, right? And so I can understand someone who is undocumented, not wanting to involve the police, not wanting to call the police, and, and that's that's super understandable. But at the, at the very least, the, the police are correctly responding to those situations, you know, if not 100% perfect, they, they know what they should be doing. As far as resources go, that's a little more difficult. Our, unfortunately, our funding prevents us from directly representing folks who are completely undocumented. Doesn't mean these folks can't call us and we can't try and find a way to, to um, direct them. Um, but, but if you're asking what sort of resources ex exist, where are the resources for folks who are undocumented and sort of the, the shameful truth is that we don't have that sort of protection um, and we don't have uh, lawyers available for those folks. The, if, if so, if a family like that were to call me, 
Um, I would probably try and refer them to California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation in Sacramento. Um, and they're a, a nonprofit law organization such as, such as us, but they um, have less restrictions and, and you know, they don't, you know, I would try and make a personal referral to someone. So, so if someone in the community is hearing that this is happening to their neighbors, we can still try and be the conduit to get them to the legal assistance they need. Um, but, but, but that it's illegal and unlawful, and, and it, it's probably a, a ploy to get someone to leave on their own. Um, and, and, you know, it's easy for me to say here, sitting in my house, you'll be fine, right? But the, but the law should protect someone like someone in that situation. So, so Katia, I don't know where you want to start with that five minute uh, speech. Alma comentó que en nuestra comunidad hay gente indocumentada que están, uh, están experienciando amenazas de parte del dueño. Nosotros queremos que ustedes sepan que esto es ilegal. El dueño no le puede decir que lo van a sacar porque los desalojos ahorita no se permiten. El dueño no lo puede sacar sin que vayan al proceso judicial. Ya sea si usted es indocumentado o si está aquí legalmente, el proceso será igual. Entonces, si alguien le dice a usted que lo va a sacar porque es indocumentado, Eso es ilegal, no se permita. Y si usted se encuentra en esa, en esa situación, debe de comunicarse con la policía porque estamos viendo que la policía le está diciendo a los dueños que no se permite. Entendemos que es un riesgo comunicarse con la policía o que a lo mejor eso es un miedo para usted y es un miedo real. Pero de lo que nosotros estamos viendo ahorita es que la policía les está diciendo a los dueños que los desalojos no se permiten y que uh, desa hacer un desalojo por cuenta a medio del dueño es ilegal y va a dejar que la persona regrese al hogar. Si usted se comunica con nuestra oficina, desafortunadamente no vamos a poder asistir porque nosotros recibimos fondos federales que no los permite ayudar a gente indocumentada. Pero eso no quiere decir que no podemos asistirlos a buscar a otra organización o a otro abogado que lo ayude con su problema. Entonces, si tiene alguna pregunta, comuníquese con nuestra oficina. Gracias. And that was very good. Uh, <laughs> a very good capture and translation. Um, any, any other questions that are coming that, might, that anyone on on the call might have. Just want to honor some space here. I'm not sure if I need to unmute this, so let me give a chance to unmute Jerry and Sir Weston. Um, any any question, Jerry or Sir Weston may have? And if not, make sure you post it in the chat. He answered the question regarding the undocumented, so it's fine. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> Just don't mute yourself if you have questions. Um, and I do have another one. Uh, Emma, um, I think it would be good to let the audience know that um, uh, Legal Services or Northern California actually had a uh, the being mothers, sorry, they, they, they had um, a lot to do with this additional protection that um, Solano County provided. They actually uh, took your advice, right, Oli? They actually pretty much, um, you helped write the, that, that protection, that additional protection for the county in regards to rent there in the moratorium. Uh, I mean, and I think as we like to describe it, I think we were just the, the tool of the what the folks in the community were asking for. Uh, you know, uh, folks who live in Vallejo, folks who live in Fairfield, they expressed to the supervisors what they were worried about for themselves and their neighbors um, and said, this is what we'd like you, our elected officials, to do. Um, and, and they accomplished it. And I think we just, you know, put it, put it in the fancy language. Um, but it really was an effort from, from folks saying, this is what I want for myself and this is what I want for my for my neighbors um, and how we can feel safe and how we can you know protect each other during this worst time and like I say keep the relationships where they are so that when things go back to when things calm down we can get as close to normal as we were before and keep people working and keep people housed and and we were we were fortunate that the uh, you know the supervisors understood that and the county council understood that and um, it was it was a team effort 
Would you like me to translate? Yeah, you, want to <laughs> you can editorialize too if you want. Catherine. Leo comentó que nuestra oficina fue la razón por qué se pasó esta uh, resolución en el condado de Solano, pero nosotros queremos que todo el mundo sepa que no solamente fuimos nosotros, sino que fue un esfuerzo de la comunidad completa. Mucha gente se comunicó con nosotros y nos dijo cuáles fueron uh, las desesperaciones que estaban sintiendo y nosotros solamente escribimos la resolución en pues, palabras legales y se pasó así, pero fue un esfuerzo de la comunidad entera. And I guess where I want to go with that is the power of the community, right? If, if the community is hurting, um, uh, just basically, I will say, find others that have the same problem and leverage organizations that are out there or resources that we have available. There are so many organizations, resources that we come across that do amazing things um, that uh, is, 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 is Part of our job to share with their community and uh, make sure that those exist. Um, that, that's so, so just what I want to add in that. Um, entonces, Entonces, es muy importante darse cuenta si hay algo en la comunidad que usted piensa que se puede cambiar o que quieren cambiar, organícense, júntense, hagan lo posible y busquen la ayuda necesaria para implementar lo que usted quiere, lo que ustedes quieren ver. Um, I, I just want to mention that we are coming up to time, so I do want to just uh, um, ask if there's any last thoughts that you want to share or takeaways that people should make, make sure that they keep top of mind as they navigate this process. Sure, I, I guess I would say um, the most important thing for anybody to, to, to think about during this situation is you, not that you have to know every single rule and what applies to you, but just, you know, have a framework of where you are protected, what your rights are, so that when something's happening to you, you can think, is this right? Do I need to look into this more? Just, you know, know when something is a legal issue, and then, you know, we can help you get the resources to educate yourself on what the answer is to that legal issue. Entonces, nosotros queremos que todo el mundo se dé cuenta que no es necesario saber cada ley, cada regla que se aplica al COVID-19, sino que es importante saber que usted tiene protecciones y saber más o menos qué son esas cosas. Y también saber con quién se puede comunicar, si tiene alguna situación legal donde necesita más ayuda. Sí. 